test that though. I mean, I, I'm really because that's that's, that's so you, you text know? one person to just yeah. the news kind of yeah, just like that, man. They, they come and they say, one time they say, people in Egypt don't believe the same. <laughs> so, so, yeah, see, so people in Egypt don't believe what, yeah. We're preaching the gospel. Yeah, yeah, well, you don't have to listen to it. Yeah, keep that's scrolling. right. Same for us. Same for us. right? <laughs> yes. We were paying for it, I guess, because they contest it. But it's just free. It's free, so that's it. Well, we're live. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Another day. Another morning. Glory to God. Wonderful. Wonderful outside. Praise the Lord. Delaware. We... Good weather this morning. We praising the Lord for it. And we thanking God for goodness, all His goodness towards us. But matter of fact, God is good. How much time? All the time. All the time. Not some of the time. He's good all the time, friend. Amen. And we're here this morning, today, Sunday, the eleventh. Yeah. Eleventh of. October already. <laughs> Almost end of the year. Kenneth, good morning, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to all. Welcome. Welcome, my sister is here. Chile. Glory to God. Thank God for Pastor Davis is here with us today. Thank God for my honey, my wife, my son. Well, glory to God and everybody that's coming on. We're going to have a grand time today in the name of the Lord. Grand time in the presence of the Lord. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. We sing that song before. We sang that before. We used to sing that in the back in the street. But no, we can have a grand time right here now. 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 Because Christ is alive, living in us. So we, we just enjoy him and allow him to to minister to us by his grace. Dorothy, good morning. All the way from Minnesota, we thank God. Kenneth from California. <laughs> Ray, good morning, Ray. God bless you. Ray from Texas, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for everyone. At this time, we're going to call my lovely wife to come and do what she would do best. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. We're happy and grateful today to share with you the good news of the gospel. We are um, so blessed to find out who we are in Christ. We're doing a series this week. Pastor Davis preached on Sunday about the deity Christ, and that's the focus of um, our whole, until we finish. <laughs> We're doing the deity of Christ daily from um, Monday through Saturday at 7.15, and um, a closer look at Jesus Christ. That's that's what that's the, mm -hmm. the closest. Mm -hmm. We just finished the series of faith, hope, and love, mm -hmm. and now we're on a closer look of Jesus Christ. And we did not know they're going to update it. And, and we we so wow. Yes, sir. What God? Look at God. Wow. So it's a, it's a good. <laughs> we we um. Okay, I mm -hmm. introduction. Yeah. Wow. And you didn't know. We didn't know. You know. Yeah. Amen. Sure. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Praise you. So when we know who our daddy is, we can know who we are. Our identity is, mm -hmm. is wrapped up into him. And I um, was talking to a person on social media, and, um, and it led me to, to read this part, pas part, passage of scripture from Colossians 3. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3. So we can know who we are. When we know who our daddy is, we our identity is wrapped up in him. And I'm going to read a portion of it. My key verse comes from verse 10. Second, um, excuse me, I said Colossians 3. I mean Colossians 2. <laughs> Chapter 2. Key verse is in verse 10. I'm going to 
try to read most of this. It's Paul speaking. He's speaking to the church in Laodicea. And he's talking to them. He's not with them. And he, he's writing this letter to them. And he's talking about their identity. Talking about Jesus and their identity in Christ. It reads, For I would that you know what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea. And for as many as have not, not seen me face, see my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father of Christ in whom are hid all the treasures and wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order, and in the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding there with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and mm -hmm. vain deceit, oh, yeah. after the traditions of men, mm -hmm. after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Mm -hmm. For in him, Dwell of all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Hallelujah. <laughs> and this Amen. in him dwells that in chap in verse 10 tells about you. And you are complete yes. in him, which is the head of all principalities and power, mm -hmm. in whom you are also circumcised mm -hmm. with the circumcision made without hands. Yeah. And putting, off, <laughs> and putting off the body of sin of the flesh by the yeah, circumcision yeah. of Christ. Mm -hmm. You are buried with him in baptism, when also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who have raised him from the dead. And you are being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh have he quickened, he made you alive, to gather with him, having forgiven you all of your trespasses. He's forgiven us of all of our sins. Mm -hmm. He bl blotting out the handwritten ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he took it away, off of the way, nailing it to the cross. So the handwriting <laughs> was the commandments, he blotted away. He took it away, nailed it to the cross. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, trying over it, trying over them in it. Mm -hmm. So let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holiday mm -hmm. or in the new moon or the Sabbath days, mm -hmm. which are a shadow of the things to come. But the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you in your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, introdu introdu intruding into those things which ye have not seen, vainly puffed up by the fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body of the joints and bands have nourishment, minister and knit together, increase with, increases with the increase of God. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as the living in the world, are you subject to ordinance? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrine of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility, and neglecting of the body, not in the honor of the satisfying of the flesh. 
I thank God for his word. I thank God that we are complete in him. Amen. I thank God for what Jesus did. He forgave us of all of our sins. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor Davis. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. One morning. Family. Praise the Lord. Very good passage out of Colossians 2. Mm -hmm. Good word, good truth. Mm -hmm. It's always good to hear the truth of the gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, just knowing that we're complete in Christ and, and uh, understanding the deity of Christ and mm -hmm. what Christ did for us and acknowledging him. Mm -hmm. Understanding that he, he paid the price. And he, he did it all for us. And we could just rest our hope in him. Mm -hmm. he's, our, he's our assurance. He's our hope. He's our joy. He's our peace. He's the foundation of the, of the church. He's the foundation. He's the head of the church, actually. Amen. So we, we're grateful today for Jesus Christ and, and, we, and, and God coming down in flesh and dwelling among us and, and uh, laying down his life for us. And we're grateful for that. So greetings, family, this morning, family and friends all, all abroad. Greetings from Pastor Davis this morning here at my family, fellowshipping uh, in truth. And, and we're, we're grateful to be here for another day and to fellowship and to spread God's truth and God's love to you all. So God bless. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, honey. We are here praising the Lord, as I said before. Glory to God. Thank God for the word of God. Amen. Got some more folks here. Any more folks? Glory to God. Yes, my nephew, the sergeant. Hey, Sarge, how are you doing, sir? Thanks for your service, God. Bless you. Bless you. Just yesterday, we were talking to a friend of my wife, and she told me she served, and I said, I never knew that. I said, I was able to thank God. Amen. Yes. We are grateful for the, for the military, grateful for the police. Yes, I said it. If you don't want, if you want, if you don't want to hear it, then you can get out the page. You don't have to be here. I thank God for the police. I stand for the police. Yes. I was a law enforcement officer for, for many, many years. And man, we never, they don't train us to kill anybody. They train us to, 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 to protect, defend. Yeah, and sometimes in that case, something happened. But some bad things happen sometimes, you know, both, both sides. You know, so but you know, blaming all the police officers because one one made a mistake, you know. Come on man. Stop, please, America, stop. Amen. Just just don't follow these politicians. Follow Jesus. And that's what we're here this morning to do is to proclaim Jesus Christ. And we're here to um, tell you about the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul um said in Romans Romans 8, um, 1, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Everyone, you hear that? To everyone who believe, amen. When Paul says that he is not ashamed of the gospel, he is saying, saying his confidence in the gospel is not misplaced there is no disgrace in declaring it <laughs> hallelujah no disgrace i'm here this is i'm here this could say the same thing like apostle paul paul had given his life to proclaiming the truth you hear that the truth not just the not just preaching he here to proclaim the truth that jesus himself had re revealed to him so uh, it was like me and pastor were talking before and i said there's a lot of people revealing talking but they never was re in god never revealed anything mm -hmm. to them. number one they're not most of them are not saved mm -hmm. amen to, to be to, to for god to reveal his truth to you 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 have to receive christ first you have to have the Holy Spirit in you. So <laughs> I said that last week, right? Did I say last, that last week? 
Yes, I did say that last week. <laughs> a person, natural man, cannot receive Christ's provision until he understands his condition. Amen. When you understand your condition, then you receive Christ. Christ comes and lives in you. Then you can be used of him, by him, you know, to proclaim the truth. Not, not just proclaim and preach, preach, preach. You know? <laughs> preaching, preaching, and 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 um, you, because you have a degree, you have a, you have education. You just come with preach, 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 and that's yeah. And and, and you got so many people following you. But first of all, the Holy Spirit has to reveal the truth to you. Imagine that. So that's why Paul went to Rome and he said, "I'm not ashamed." of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is a power friend that's the only power you, you Paul proclaimed that is the power the power that can transform you any one of us this morning transform me 47 years ago the power of God not because somebody lay hands on me and push me down that's not power the power of the gospel friend mm -hmm. faith come by hearing <laughs> and hearing what the word of god how can they believe in whom they have not heard and how can they hear without a preacher and how can they preach except they be sent and as i just was saying to you to be sent by god to preach the gospel you must receive it first of all you must understand who you are a lost person needs need a savior and when Jesus Christ come and live in you, then you have to wait on him. And he will equip you to go forth and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why Paul could have said that. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To every man that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. So today we're going to just deal with them. A few little things here, and then we're going to let you go. Amen. I know everybody. Is, um, uh, I have all my notes mixed up. <laughs> oh Jesus! Thank you for. Thank you. Thank you. Wow! What did I do? Hmm. Okay. Amazing. Amazing grace. How sweet the song. That save a wretch like me. <laughs> okay. Somebody took up my note. I took my note. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry, friends. Sorry. Sorry. Amen. All things work together for good. To them that love the Lord. I don't get worked up. <laughs> Giving his life. Yes, I was a Back, in, back into what Paul was saying. Paul went and wrote to the, to the Romans and was proclaiming the truth of the gospel. Because Paul recognized Rome, in Rome there was, was corruption. Just like today, just like Washington, D.C. <laughs> Rome was probably worse, or even about the same thing, like Washington, D.C. You know Washington, D.C. is corrupt? Do you all know that? <laughs> uh, if you're watching the news, you may, you know, and you know, friend, is all of them, all, both sides. <laughs> it's both sides. So the, take, your, take your confidence from, uh, from these people and just trust the Lord. So Paul went and, and he was not ashamed to tell them. Friend, God is looking for someone to go to D.C. to tell them to preach the truth of the gospel. Yeah. Got the, the, the speaker of the house there, they say, I'm a, I'm a Christian. What Christian is that? <laughs> Anybody call it themselves Christian, friend? Man, Facebook probably not. <laughs> Facebook probably might ban me today. <laughs> but yeah, because of, yeah, pointing it out, yeah. Paul did not, was not ashamed, was not afraid to point it out, point out the truth to the, to the people, the corruption. Yes. Amen. Yeah. The reason that they are corrupted is because they don't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. That's the only power that can transform a man's life this morning. Because who? Why? Jesus Christ? Jesus gave his life for you and me, everyone. You know, given God desires that all men to be reconciled unto himself. All this is from God. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. All this is from God who reconciled us to him through, to himself, through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world unto himself in Christ, not counting men's sin against them, and he has committed to us the ministry, this message of reconciliation. Now, why are the, why are the preachers not preaching that message? <laughs> Eh? Second Corinthians right there, 5, 18, and 19. That is the message that you and I today, uh, under the new covenant of grace, should be preaching. That's the message. God was in Christ. He did it at the cross. He, he didn't just forgive us for our sin, friend, like, like, we, 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 like my wife was saying a while ago. Yes, yeah, he forgave. But he took them away. Jesus took them away at the cross. How many of your sins and my sins was in the future when Christ went to the cross? How many of your sins? All. All. We wasn't even born yet, but he took them away. Did we ask him to forgive us that time? No, no we wasn't ever wrong. Mm -hmm. So he took them away. Hallelujah. He said he made the provision that when you are born and you, you, you're going to recognize that you are lost, the wages of sin, is death, which is spiritual death, and the gift of God is life, eternal life. So he made the way because he, he, he died, he took away your sin, he shed his blood. The Bible said without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness for sin. That was one time when they used to shed the blood, but it was a covering with the animal. The animal could only cover sin. He could not take away sin. So Jesus came and he took them away at the cross. And he reconciled you there at the cross. You have you already been reconciled there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you saved? When at that time? You, that was 2,000 years ago when he did that. <laughs> now, if you're still lost, if right now you are, you're, you're a man or a woman, and you're still lost. You need to do something. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that. He said the world sin of your sin is unbelief in me. So you need to receive me now. Now. Jesus saying, saying that to you. Receive me now. Because I have reconciled you already. I have forgiven you already. <laughs> I want to give you life. So come to me and receive life. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory. I feel good this morning. I feel excited this morning for this message, friends. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have life. Friends, friends, you hear the word? For whosoever. Come. If you come, you will get life. Why you need life? If you never received Christ, you dead. You still dead. You dead. The wages of sin is dead. What sin? Sin. Whatever sin. The sin of Adam. You were born dead. You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We all were. Amen. Today I'm I'm alive in Christ. Christ is alive in me because I received Christ. 47 years ago. So, so <laughs> The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is alive, living in me. The Roman said that. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, that spirit will raise you up right now, even now. Now. Give you life. Glory to God. So Paul did not, was not afraid, was not ashamed to tell the corruption, the corrupt Romans, 
that Jesus is the only way. So here today, we are not afraid to tell the corrupt Americans, glory to God, <laughs> the, the corrupt Africans, the corrupt West Indians, the corrupt every everyone that are corrupt today, I'm not ashamed to tell you that Jesus Christ is the only way. Not a the way. He's not a way. He is the way. He is the way. Amen. Hallelujah. For God was pleased, amen, to have his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth and things on, in heaven, by making peace through the, his blood shed on the cross, yes. Once you were alienated, Paul is speaking to the Colossians here, from God and were enemies to, to in your minds because you your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you. Yes. Now you, you know he has reconciled you <laughs> by Christ's physical body. To death he presents you holy in his sight without blem blemish and free from accusation. Those of us that came to Christ, we, uh, the devil could only accuse us. <laughs> but, he, amen. but we are free this morning. We are free. So I'm encouraging you this morning, if you never receive him, you can be free today. Come to him before it is too late. God desire for reconciliation Reconciliation precedes his provision. For God so loved the world, as I said that before, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever mean you and me, you know, whether you're black, you're white, you're rich, you're poor, he's talking to you this morning, talking to all of us. For whosoever means that not just the Jews. Some, some people just got hung up and say, well, God, the Jews are God's chosen people, yes. But but yeah yeah they, yeah and some some even come back come down. I saw a, a video the other day and this guy was saying we are the black chosen ones the black folks <laughs> man you, you think God looking at man as black and white we are all human race man God called all of us all of us to come and receive Him Amen God desire um John sorry. For God, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> Greater love, that's John 15 and 13. Greater love has no man than this, that he, that he laid down his life for his friends. He called us friends, friend. He loved us so much, he called us friends. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but God demonstrated his love, his own love to, for us in this while we were Sinners, Christ died for us. Sinners mean they're lost, okay? Not the stuff that we do, people doing right or wrong, that too, but, but the, the real meaning of that is, is lost. Amen. Romans 5 and 8. Amen. Glory to God. Love, not strike, not spikes, held Jesus to the cross because of his love for us this morning. That's what held him to the cross. That's what held him, friend. He had the power, he was God in the flesh. He had the power to, to say no, and just, just destroy all of them. But he, because of his love for us, he told the Father, and said, people say, well, who he was he praying to if he is God? <laughs> At that time, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the same, friend. <laughs> I think you explained it very well last Sunday. <laughs> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. An egg, white, yolk, and, and a shell. <laughs> One egg. <laughs> Glory to God. Yes, 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 yeah. Yes. So he gave himself. No, no. The reason God, one of the reasons I think that God, I think, is not, not okay. <laughs> what God, God, Jesus has to became 
man. God has became man in the form of Jesus. There was no one, because I told you before, the sacrifice of the animals could not have taken away sin. But there was a covering. And it used to happen every year. Check it out, yes. The atonement. And, and, and there's a lot of preachers today preaching and say, Jesus atoned for your sin. That's a lie. That's not true. He did not atone. He took away your sin. Christ took away the bulls and goats atone. That means cover. Jesus took them away once and for all. And he will never go back and die anymore. He, de he, de he dealt with sin once and for all. 2,000 years ago. And that's when he brought in a brand new covenant. The covenant of grace. <laughs> and that's the ministry that he gave us, as I said in, in before. He gave us a new, um, um, a mini the ministry, the ministry to preach, a, new, the minist a ministry of the new covenant. So why we are still preaching and teaching under the old, telling people they have to do this and they have to do that. <laughs> no, tell the people the reason that they are do still doing it is because they never understand the true identity. He gave, he made a way that you and I should have a brand new identity in him. And when you don't understand your true identity in Christ, there's no way you're going to keep and do it. No. You see, Paul said once he was alienated, once you were, you were that, doing those things. But now, thank you, Lord, you understand your identity. You don't do it no more. We were discussing before when I said the Holy Spirit is in you. If you are a child of God, if you're a child of God and, and you're tempted to do the wrong, you, 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 you realize it. The Holy Spirit, you realize it. Mm -hmm. Telling you this is not who you are, man. This is not consistent to who you are. So that's so important for every man that are born again today to know their true identity, including you, preacher man. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I like to talk to the preachers. I like to talk to the preachers because we, we are the one that, that, that yeah, like we said, how can they preach except they be sent? And how, how you know, you, first of all, when God called you to preach, okay, and to teach, He gave some apostles, some prophets. So you know the fivefold ministry? For what what he gave why he gave you that? Some of us get called our name, all different names. And I said, like me, I don't do that no more. Well why why you think why you calling yourself an apostle and a, a prophet and a preacher, not a preacher, but a pastor? Pastor. Pastor, yeah. <laughs> pastor yeah, and teacher. Evangelist. Eh? Evangelist. Why are you calling yourself that you just just title? No, you do you know why 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 Paul explained that? He said, for what? The perfecting of the saints. That is the purpose. That is the purpose. That's why he called you. Because he wants his saints to be perfected. To understand. Not, me, not, not, to, not to understand the perfection in Christ. He wants you and me to teach them. And that's what we are doing here, friend. Helping you to know. You know, who you are. is so important. Very, very, everything, everything depends on your identity in Christ. Who you know, who are you in Christ. If you know that, friend, your life will never be the same. You'll not be struggling like the, the guy, Mr. Bonds, that sing that song. I'm coming up of the rough side of the mountain. I'm trying my best to make it in. <laughs> you, 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 I used to love the song, too. I used to sing it, man. But then I realized, oh, when I start understanding truth, I say, oh, this is not sound for me. This sound is, oh, it was for me, not now. <laughs> I don't sing it no more. There are a lot of songs that I used to sing, songs I used to sing before. I don't sing them no more because they mean nothing. Because we, we just sing because it's, it's a song, you know. And a lot, a lot of the, good. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, a lot of the, the sing, songs said on them, most of them are lost too. <laughs> most of them are lost and so they make songs you know they, 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 they compose song song to, to, to make money here yeah, most of them you know not 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 a spiritual gift <laughs> <laughs> so the spiritual song the spiritual gift from the Lord where well, like like Paul like Paul says like I said in when we first started Paul got 
the revelation. You could go back to the Acts of the Apostles when 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 Paul was struck down on the road of Damascus and he got up. <laughs> got and he went to what was the guy named Colinus? Colinus. Oh, no. Paul. No, Ananias. not Colinus. Um, Ananias? Ananias. Ananias. And Ananias. And to open up his eyes. Mm -hmm. His eyes were blinded. And so, yeah, just like that, a lot of people's eyes are blinded right now. And God wanted to open their eyes to the truth. The truth would open your eyes. And Paul went, went after that, Paul got that scene. He went to the backside of the desert and, and God started purging legalism out of him. Because Paul was was so legalistic. He was religious, friend. Don't you know that? Before and after. Paul was li re religious. Mm -hmm. He was not saved. Wasn't born again. Yes. That's why he gave orders to to kill Stephen, to kill kill the church of Jesus. May the people are calling him Christ. Calling him, I'm sorry. Not calling him. People that, that call themselves Christians, amen. So Paul went back in the backside of the desert and God purged all the legalism from him. And then he came out. I don't know how many years. A lot of, it's, it's, it's up, it's up for, for discussion. Different, some people say three years, some people say 15 years. Three years? I think, I think Paul said three years. Three years, so, okay. I think so. Yeah. So he went for three years and three years is a lot of teaching. Some people, some people get saved today, today and to marry here than the preaching. You know, this, 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 this guy, um, this guy some time ago came, this, this singer, big singer, came five minutes ago, he was like, <laughs> next thing, he came, oh, they're having a revival. And I said, what is that? I, I, I wasn't a problem about that. Somehow he never took me. I said, well, what is that? <laughs> revival? Everybody running. Oh, he's a re revival. Everybody lifting their head. Hey, revival what? Revival when they come through the word of God. Not just singing. <laughs> yeah, he didn't even know the Lord. Yeah, two days you come and start having revival. I mean, what, what are you talking about? Take an example. Paul went there three years. Three years. It took me how much years before I understand truth, friend? A lot, a lot of years. A lot of years. Okay? A lot of study, a lot of, a lot of understanding, <laughs> a lot of listening too. And sometimes I'm a, I'm a good listener, okay? I may not be a good reader, but I'm a good listener. <laughs> yes, and you have to think in first. God, God could only reveal it to you when you have the Holy Spirit in you. Yes, the, the natural man cannot receive the, the things of the Spirit. Amen. When the Holy Spirit is living in you, you can receive the spirit, the ministry of the spirit, the spirit will reveal truth to you. God will not reveal air to you. And somebody, oh, God revealed it to me. What is air? How, how come God reveal air to you? <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> you got to, you got to, you got to claim it right here. You got to put it in light of the Bible, the word of God. Amen. And if you, whatever, you, whatever is being revealed to you, you got to be around by the word of God. Amen. <laughs> and that's one of the one of the truth here. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the truth is reconciliation. You see, I implore you on God's behalf, be reconciled. Paul was encouraging us in Second Corinthians. He said, please receive it. When you receive it, your life will never be the same. Receive what he did at the cross for you. Love, his love for you at the cross. Amen. He took away your sin at the cross. He made a way. He cleared the deck at the cross. That's what he had to do. He forgave the world. You remember that? Yes, at the cross. Not, not when you accept Christ that we say, oh, we, Lord, please forgive me. <laughs> that time you should say, Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. You already did. You already been forgiven at the cross 2,000 years ago. None of us was here. Not, not even your great-great-grandparents. <laughs> Without 2,000 years, yeah. Yeah, he did it at the cross. So when, when we come to him, right now if you come to him, he will come to him for his life. Because he's offering you and every, everyone his life. We taught the life of Christ 
You are nothing. You are just a forgiven cop. A for, forgiven dead person. <laughs> you, in other words, without having his life in you, you are a walking dead. <laughs> yes. Amen. And that was that was Paul boldness. That was boldness. It takes boldness to tell someone that. It takes boldness. The Holy Ghost in you give you the power to tell someone that. Because that's the only power that will change your life. Someone's life. The power of God. The power of God don't mean you're speaking in tongues and you're shaking and whatever you do. No, the power that you understand who you are. Who, who Christ is. What Christ did. He taking you, took, in, took you from, he will take you today, if you never receive him, take you from darkness into marvelous light. Yes. Over here you're dark. Over there is bright light. Like at, at, at the end, at the end of the tunnel, like I said before. <coughs> There's a bright light. And Jesus is in that bright light. Everything about Christ Jesus today is light. Everything. Not some things. Everything. Everything. And that's why I love him this morning. Paul said, I love him because he first loved me. Amen. Amen. Forgive, give, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil one for if you you forgive men when they they sin against you your heavenly father will not forgive you <laughs> preacher man i thought you preaching grace <laughs> But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive you. That was in Matthew 6, 12 and 15. Based on, based on the grace today, this was, this was there, sorry. This was before, under the law. Just, just remember, brothers and sisters, that when Christ taught, he taught under the law. Okay. When Christ was here, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, eh? and and all the things that was said there, Jesus was still under the law. I um, mean, still teaching under the law. Why? He didn't fulfill it yet. What day Christ fulfilled the law? The day he died. So, when he said that in Matthew there. That was true then. <laughs> Today, under grace, under grace, he took away your sin. Okay? So Paul came back and said, forgive as Christ forgave you. You already been forgiven. And he forgave us for one purpose, to give us life. Amen. He made, made the decision at the cross so so you can come and have life Ephesians 4 and 22 be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you okay so that's under grace what I read under, in Matthew was under the law Today we are under grace. Christ forgave all, not some of it, all of our sins, as we said before. First Peter 3 and 18. For Christ died for sin once and for all, the righteous for the unrighteous. Yeah, he's the only he's the only righteous one. And he, he he's the one who died for the unrighteous. He, who, uh, who who is the unrighteous one? Every one of us. <laughs> you too, yes. <laughs> All of us. <laughs> Amen. To bring you to God. He was put to death. 
in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. So salvation this morning is alive in Christ. Christ is alive in you. First Peter 3 and 18. Colossians 2, 13 and 14. When you were dead, yeah, that's before, okay? <laughs> yes, he forgave us then. Here's something I found on the web. According to thoughtcatalog.com, 14. My phone always doing this. This smartphones. Let me turn it off. <laughs> oh, Gloria, sorry. Hmm. No better not to keep the phone on. Okay. The Siri always come in and in mixing up, interfering with my message. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we say that all year on when we are dead in the Christ, Colossians 2, 13 and 14, when we are dead, yes. So if this morning you're still dead, he forgave you for all your sins and you need to give you, you need to come to him for life. Uh, Acts 26 and 17, I am sending you to them to open the eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and to place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. That's 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 what God is was telling Paul, Amen. And he's telling us that today. Same thing today. Go go tell them people in DC, Washington, DC, and all your surroundings, and all the people around you, maybe your family, who knows? Your loved ones, Amen. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Paul they was not ashamed and he's encouraging us this morning not to be ashamed not to be ashamed to tell the truth of the gospel. The gospel is the only thing that can save people. Not, not Mohammed, not Buddha, not Confucius, not the Pope too, friends, yes. Some of you listening to me maybe thinking that the Pope has that power. He's, one brother, one guy told me one time on my, on my job years ago that if you're not, if you're not a Catholic, you're, you're um, you're not going to heaven. <laughs> oh God! Yes, that's how that's how deep it is, friend. People just just tied up in religion. Religion cannot take you to heaven. So he was he don't know the truth. That's why he's telling me that. He thinks he, he believe a lie, but it is a big lie, and that lie is from the pit of hell. That if you're not a Catholic, if you're not a Pentecostal, some people say that if you didn't baptize. In, in Jesus' name, you're not going to heaven. That's a big lie, too. Amen. If you didn't baptize in my church, he said, they think baptism, water baptism is salvation. That's not salvation. Jesus is the one who took away your sin. And when you came to Christ, you get, you get salvation. You receive salvation, you receive his life. Yes, that's salvation. In a nutshell, period. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Amen. It's not what you do, it's what he did. He did it all. He did it all. All, all, all. He, he did it all. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> I see a brother from Africa, Kenya, is here. <laughs> hey, brother Patrick. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's take, take a few, a few um, comments here. New Covenant Testament will start was started at his death. Yes, yes, brother. Exactly. At his death. That's when the New Testament, the New Covenant started. He ushered in at his death a brand new covenant, the covenant of grace. When, 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 when the church began was the day of Pentecost. That's the day, from the day of Pentecost, people, when they received Jesus, the Holy Spirit came and lived in them. Before that, the Holy Spirit never came and lived in anybody. Even in David and all, that's why David came back and said, take not the Holy Spirit from me in, what, Psalm 51, I think? Psalm 51, mm -hmm. David was saying, take Lord, Lord, David was a man, a man after God's own heart. Amen. 
And that's why David could have do all what he did because he, he did not have the Holy Spirit living in him. But he had the Holy Spirit came down upon him, upon him, and that's why he was able to say, Lord, take not the Holy Spirit from me. Because he knew the, 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 the value of it. But when the Holy Spirit is in the, uh, upon, upon him, how, how good he was. Peter, Paul, and uh, Peter and James and all the other disciples never had the Holy Spirit in them until the day of Pentecost. You remember Peter before before Pentecost? <laughs> take, a, take a little glimpse of Peter, friend. The day before Pentecost, before after Jesus, Jesus, um, before Jesus, he was walking with Jesus. Yeah? The damsel came up and said, hey, you man, you, you was with him. <laughs> Peter started cussing that little girl. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He was with Jesus. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't know this man. <laughs> I don't know this man. I tell you, it's not, that's not the way I think Peter said it. <laughs> I can't. I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you didn't say the, the way I'm saying it, friend. You know? <laughs> I can't tell you what he said. No, those words don't come out from my mouth anymore. <laughs> Yeah, but but um, yeah, the day but after Peter received the Holy Spirit, Amen. The day of the day of, after the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, you remember you remember before Jesus left, he, what he told the disciples, he said, "I had to go away, well, go away, but I'll send you the Comforter." Amen. So the Comforter came. Amen. Today, Pentecostal people, the church is a religion, people. Religious Pentecostal people saying, well, you got to tarry for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here. All you have to do is to believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will come and live in you. The Holy Spirit cannot live in a lost, in a dead person. No. <laughs> when you come to Christ, you get life. That's when the Holy Spirit came in. You were baptized by the Spirit, those of you who came to Christ. Baptized by the Spirit. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You were baptized by the Spirit into the body of Christ. His body. Amen. And that's why you're a child this morning, a child of God. Amen. That's why I call myself a child of God. Tina, all the way from Louisiana, right? Oh yes, yes. Uh, we pray for y'all in Louisiana. God bless you for joining us, sister. That's Tina, right? I can't see that too well yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. We know Dorothy, we know Terry from Texas. Good morning, my friend Terry. Glory to God. <laughs> That's a lady that very passionate in what she did do. Nurse. God bless the nurses and the doctors. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Many call themselves Christians but are not born again. Yeah, I, oh, just this morning, remember I tell you that? Somebody come in the same thing, yeah. Mm. Many I call themselves Christians. That's why I don't call myself Christian anymore. I call myself a child of God. That's my, that's my identity. And that's your identity if you are born again. If you're a Christian, yeah, you could be a Christian and still unborn again, yeah, but, but if you're claiming just to be a Christian and not being born again, then <laughs> you're just a Christian, yeah. <laughs> that means you belong to the religion, just like you could be a Muslim too, you know, that's exactly what it is. But, but when you say you're a child of God, that's identity 101. <laughs> that's identity right there. Because that means you a child of God, and 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 and, and that could never change. Okay, so you can never lose it. In John ten, Jesus said, "Anyone that the Father has given me, no one will able to pluck them out of my hand." We dealt with that the other night too. No one could pluck you out from His hand. If you're a child of God this morning, you cannot lose it, friend. Don't be afraid. Don't listen to the. To the, to the legalists that are telling you you can lose your salvation. Amen. 
there's nothing you can do in this world to lose your salvation. When you, if you, st if you still continue in doing wrong stuff like that, just know who you are, a child of God. We had some testimonies even a couple, couple nights ago. Yeah, and we have a testimony. I think it was last night, where a calling and the calling broadcast where this brother was saying that um, when he when he did the the the, the the, the series over victory over depression, things change. He said, now that I can't, I'm tempted sometimes to, to get depressed, but when I realize who I am, identity, friend, identity, identity is, is the key, 100%, one one <laughs> when you know your identity. I'm talking here by experience now, okay? <laughs> when you know your identity, you, this is not consistent, man. Can you do it? Yes, you can. Paul says, we are free. You're free. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, do not use your freedom to indulge in your flesh. <laughs> but use your freedom to what? Serve one another in love. And that's what we are doing here every single day, seven days a week. Serving one another in love. Presenting to you good news that can help you to grow. And, and, I, and, I, and I know that you are growing. I know that because I'm going to. <laughs> I know I'm going to. Amen. You know, some people who may not express themselves in the, but it takes a little while. It takes a little while. Like the bamboo tree, that bamboo. <laughs> Come back to that bamboo tree. That man, that, that farmer was watering the bamboo tree every single day Amen. until five years before that bamboo sprung up. And when he sprung up, woo, mama mio, <laughs> he brought forth oh, so much bamboo, different, different things, leaves with him, with some stools and stem with him. Uh, you ever see a bamboo field, my friend? Uh, we have a lot of them back home. They got some here too. Yes, so that's, that's what it is. Watering it every single day. Watering it by the word of God. The word of God is the only thing that will help you to grow. Some people say, well, pray, pray. Pray, 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 pray. You pray every day, praying every day. Nothing wrong in praying. I pray every day. I thank the Lord. My prayer is a way of thanking the Lord. I don't beg the Lord anymore. Uh, you don't have to pray the same way like me, you know. But that's that's my my form of prayer. Lord, I thank you. I thank you because you know you know why? Because I recognize the Word of God says that everything that I need that pertains to life and godliness. I already have it in Christ Jesus. So why am I begging him again? You know, so what I do now, I just thank him. That's that's a way to, in, to encourage you to do. Just thank him. Thank him for who you are this morning. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Thank you. See, Chris, Chris spoke. Thank you, Brother Chris, for coming and joining us. Glory to God. Jeffrey, glory to God. Thank you, Father, for all those that are on Facebook. Thank God for all of those of us that are here this morning. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful program that something was said and that, that somebody heard. Thank you for using us this morning for your honor and for your glory. Thank you for Pastor Davis, my wife, who, who came and spoke and greet, greeted folks. We thank God for Lee that's sitting right back there. <laughs> You did how do they call him? Tech? Tech? Uh, <laughs> IT. IT man. <laughs> Glory to God. We thank you, Father, for just the blessings of the Lord that make us rich and no sorrows with it. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for, for, for Karen. Thank you for Kenneth. Thank you for Ray. Thank you for Dorothy. Thank you for Chile. Thank you. Thank you for everyone, Hannah. Lord, and my wife here, I pray for her already. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Tina, we thank you for Tina. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of, a lot of comments this morning from our brother this morning. We thank you for them. We pray this morning for those in authority. President Donald Trump, we pray for him today in Jesus' name. And we pray that, the Father, you minister grace to him. We say, your grace is enough. Thank you for the healing virtue, healing, touching his, him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And not only him, Lord, all those 
that are con contacted this dead, dangerous virus. We thank you and we thank you for blessing them and healing them in Jesus' name. And those that were not able to, that were not healed and, and pass, we thank you for the family and we pray for the family that you come for the family. We are praying for the family of the Ford family this morning. A brother in Christ who passed away, I think it was last Saturday before. Glory to God. And I think the funeral is coming up and Saturday coming. Friday, Friday coming. Praise God. For, thank you for sis, Sister Ford. And we were ministry with them one time. And we thank you for, for, for them. And we pray for the family today in the name of Jesus. Pray in Jesus' name, Lord. We thank you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Love you. And we see you tomorrow evening, 7 15. Same time at 7 15 Eastern Standard Time. God bless you. Amen. Good night. Goodbye now. <laughs>